Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about Bakake. Now a little while ago, okay maybe more than a little while ago, I did a kind of walkthrough on how to use Kickstarter and um, one of the questions that I got in the comments and I think I got a few people on social media asking me about was Backikit. Now at the time I hadn't used Backikit and since then I have now had a little bit of a dabble with it a few times. So I've just finished running another Kickstarter campaign that was successful and I am about to put it through Backikit. So this will be my third time using Backikit. So I thought it was a good time for me to kind of talk through the pros, maybe some cons, and kind of what it's all about and give you a little bit of insight. Because I've had a little look online, especially on YouTube, and I can't see that many kind of tutorials or videos kind of explaining what Backikit actually is. So let's do that. Now, I, I like to start my videos with a disclaimer. I am not an expert. I'm not an expert at Kickstarter. I am not an expert at Backikit. However, I will try my best to answer any questions you have. Um, so feel free to leave them in the comments if there's something that you're not sure of. I can't promise that I will know the answer, but I will try my best. Um, and also things change. So policies change, processes change. So what I show you or tell you in this video may not always be accurate um, or correct basically. If you haven't already watched my video about Kickstarters and you're not really sure what they are, feel free to head over. I will leave a link up above and below in the description so that you can check that video out. I do a walkthrough, kind of show you how to set up a campaign um, as well as give you some tips uh, and best practices, I guess, on running a Kickstarter campaign. So without further ado, let's get into it. Backer kit is basically like a post campaign management platform. That is probably not how they would describe it at all. But what it means is you can kind of manage all of your backers, pledges, the items, the delivery, um, everything kind of that happens after the campaign, you can do through Backerkit. Now, there are probably lots of uh, things on Backerkit that are amazing that I've not even looked at. So whatever I talk about today, like Backikit does more than that. This is just what I use and the benefits that I find are good. So the first thing is, uh, if you've ever run a Kickstarter campaign yourself and you've um, kind of done the surveys through uh, Kickstarter, you may have noticed that they are a little bit of a pain at times. Um, with Kickstarter, when you send a survey, well, in case you're not even sure what that is, I better explain what that is. Basically, when you do a Kickstarter, at the end of it, you need to know what rewards your backers actually want or what they need, where, where they're going to. You know, you might do t-shirts, they might, you might need to know what sizes they're gonna be, what colors they choose, etc., etc. With Kickstarter, the process is a bit of a pain. You have to set up individual surveys manually for each tier. And unfortunately, there is no duplicate function. So even if you're gonna send out exactly the same survey to every single person, you have got to copy and paste or type it out manually into each survey that goes out for each tier. It's not great. It takes a long time. Um, now, I understand if your surveys are all gonna be different, then, you know, that's cool. But like, when I'm doing um, my back, my surveys for my backers most of the time those surveys are pretty much exactly the same the only difference is you backed one pin or you pledged for one pin what design do you want you pledged for two pins what design do you want and so on and so forth um now with backer kit personally i find it a lot less manual and a lot easier to manage so at the moment I'm showing you my campaign page. Now, I haven't done any of it, so I can't really show you very easily um, <laughs> because I haven't set it up yet. But you'll see here this section that says set up items, uh, customize add-ons, add shipping fees, pre-order store, backer support. You've got pledge levels, preview surveys. I'll go through kind of a few parts of it. The way that it works on backer kit with surveys, if I'm correct, is you set up your items. So for example, if I've got five different pin designs, I would set up those five pin designs, like, you know, oh, this one's a flower, this one's a heart, etc., etc. You give them all skews, which you can just make up, add pictures, so on and so forth. 
Um, if you've got any add-on items, which I'll I'll go through uh, a little bit more, um, you can add them in as add-on items. Um, if you're going to do shipping through Backer Kit, you set up the shipping rates. And once that's kind of all set up in the background, a bit like an online store, you would kind of have your own like little catalogue. Um, then you can just kind of assign them to the surveys. Um, the backer kit will kind of, I think, if I, oh, hang on, hang on. I was just about to say backer kit will know how many you're going to ask for, but I don't know. I could be completely making that up. I, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure because it's been a few months since I've done it and I haven't, like I said, I haven't done it this time yet. <laughs> I'm about to do it. Either you can very easily say this one needs, you need to ask this person five times how many enamel pins they're going to need or it, it automatically pulls that information through from Kickstarter because that's probably something that's very important for me to mention is it's all integrated with Kickstarter. So Backerkit and Kickstarter are integrated, which means that everything you set up, all of your rewards, things like that, all pull through. If people have um, added on extra items, etc., etc., it all pulls through to Backerkit. So all of that data is already there. You don't have to do a lot. Um, so yeah, either it recognizes that you've um, said, you know, this reward is for five pins, or it's very easy to do so, but I'm sorry, I can't actually remember. Oh, I'm useless. Why am I doing this video? <laughs> yeah, so personally, I find it a lot easier to do the surveys and the just any kind of data collection through back a kit. Um, and as with Kickstarter, you can ask whatever questions you want. You can do a bit of market research if you want through these surveys, but you know, that's up to you. So the next thing is add-ons. Now with Kickstarter, once the campaign's done, it's done. Like people can't add items to their pledge unless you want to do it very, very manually. So I used to send out my surveys on Kickstarter and say, how many, or, you know, let me know if you want to add anything else on and I'll send you a PayPal invoice. And let me tell you, it was not easy. So trying to organize all of that, send out PayPal requests or invoices and chasing people for payment and things like that. It was a real slog. However, it's something that I always offer because there are so many people who miss the opportunity to add things because, you know, people have their own lives. They're busy. They're not always just focused on what's going on in your business and your life. And it was so worth doing because so many people would come back saying, oh yeah, actually, now that this is unlocked, I really wanted to add this to my pledge or, oh, I, you know, want some more stickers or whatever it is. You, you never know. Some people want to upgrade their shipping. Yeah, so it's definitely something worth doing, but you there's no kind of functionality in Kickstarter to do that. So it was always a manual task. Now, with Backer Kit, you can add on like, add-on items basically so they can just add them to their like kind of shopping cart while they're answering the survey they can be like oh actually I want to add another pin I want to add another washi tape I want to upgrade my shipping I'm going to give you a tip there's so many things that you can add or do and it just gives people the opportunity to add that little extra something I guess you could kind of call it upselling it's a bit like upselling now for me the main benefit the main pro the main reason I went with back kit is to do with the shipping. <laughs> oh, Kickstarter shipping. If you've watched my previous Kickstarter video, you will know that I find it very difficult to explain what the issue is with the shipping. So <laughs> I'm probably gonna fumble my words quite a lot because I just can't seem to explain it properly. When you set up a campaign on Kickstarter, let's say you want to, I don't know, uh, raise £10,000 and that is for the item, the production of the item, let's call it a puzzle. You're going to make a puzzle and it's going to cost you £10,000. Now all of the people that uh, pledge for this puzzle are going to need to have it shipped. So you know, you need to think about how much you're going to charge for shipping. They might pay £10 for a puzzle and five pounds for shipping and they've paid 15 pounds. Now 10 of that is allocated towards your puzzle and you will allocate the five towards the shipping because that's what it's gonna cost you. But Kickstarter allocates all 15 towards your puzzle. So in theory, what you need to do is work out how much shipping is gonna cost before you set up your Kickstarter and include that in the goal. 
Now, the thing I've always struggled with is I don't know where in the world my customers are going to be. I don't know how many items they're going to pledge for. I don't know how much their shipping's going to be. I can't work that out. I can only guess that. And sometimes it leaves you a bit short <laughs> or quite short on funds because you haven't worked out how much shipping you need accurately because you just can't do that because you can't work out unless you're like clairvoyant who's going to back where in the world they're going to be how many they're going to have you just can't estimate it properly and this is where backer kit comes in so the way to do it with backer kit is you would only have ten thousand pounds as your goal for your puzzle and then through backer kit once they've pledged and they know how much you know how many items they're going to have how many puzzles they're going to have they will fill out their survey and say i am in the us and i've got five puzzles and i want to upgrade my shipping and back a kit based off of the shipping that you set up in this add shipping fee section will make sure they are charged correctly now they don't get charged when they complete the survey, they get charged for shipping at a later date. Now what that this is one of the cons is that sometimes it can cause a bit of confusion because you can scream it until the cows come home. You can put it all over your Kickstarter campaign. You are not going to get charged shipping when the campaign ends. You are going to get charged shipping through Kickst uh, through backer kit and that will be once the items are ready to ship. You can put that information in the kind of uh, reward section. You can put it in your updates to them. You can even put it in the survey to back a kit to make it really, really clear. And people will still not read that information or understand that information. So when the charges come out, they're like, uh, why are you charging me again? And I'm like, we're not charging you again. <laughs> so yeah, that is one thing to, to bear in mind is that back a kit doesn't take the money when the survey is uh, submitted or completed it takes those funds when you are ready to ship the items so yeah it can feel like a bit of an unexpected charge to people because they think that charge has already come out um, or they think that you know they dealt with the shipping back in kickstarter so that is just one thing to bear in mind however it means that you're not going to undercharge for shipping uh, i mean unless you've set up your shipping rates wrong in back a kit in theory you should be good. And if you run an online store already, then you should have an idea of how much things cost to ship. You'll know who you want to ship it through. You probably have all of your shipping supplies already. And it's quite easy to just kind of work out, oh, okay, well, I already sell enamel pins or, or puzzles in my shop. Um, and this is how much they cost for me to send out. So you can set up the rates correctly, hopefully. I haven't had any issues with undercharging for shipping in backer kit yet. However, with Kickstarter, quite often I was short uh, when it came to paying for the shipping and I had to pay out of my own pocket, which isn't great. Now, one thing that could be considered as either a pro or con, depending on how you look at it, is the fact that Backer Kit will review your surveys before you can send them. Now, this is great because it means that someone from Backer Kit can look at what you've done and make sure you set it up correctly because I will say this, Backer Kit looks really confusing. As you can see from here, there's so many different things down the left-hand side. It feels a little bit overwhelming and it's just kind of a big blank slate. But once you start doing each section, you just kind of move on to the next section and it's not actually that hard it, it's it is fairly intuitive it just looks a little bit overwhelming but the great thing is is like I said you request your review once you've filled everything in and what they will do is back a kit will go through everything and make sure that you've set everything up correctly they'll make suggestions if they think that something could be done better um and you know, it's great to have somebody looking over what you've done to make sure that you haven't messed up before you send it out and make a, a huge mistake. So that's great. However, it does delay the process. Now, as someone who is now on their third round of, of backer kit, I don't necessarily feel like I need that review. So I think it would be great if it was um, optional, but as far as I can see, it's not. Um, and you know, I think it can take a good few days. Does it say on here? Okay, so it can take two business days for them to review it. And you can see from this page, because I haven't set everything up, it's saying like, you know, you don't have any items assigned to any of these rewards. Um, you don't have any add-ons, you've done nothing. You don't have an FAQ, you don't have a business address. 
Um, so, you know, it will tell you before you send it for review if there's anything that you've missed. And it will also give you recommendations down below for things that you could do or probably should do, but don't have to. Um, yeah, so as I said, that can be both a, a pro and a con. In my case, I now see it as more of a con because of the fact that it just delays the process and I want to get my surveys out ASAP. The quicker you get your surveys out, the quicker people can complete them, the quicker you know how many you need of each item, which means you can place an order with your manufacturer or make the item yourself, whatever it is that's going on. But until you have that information back, you don't know what you're doing. Get what I'm saying here? One of the other great things is the backer kit will provide customer service for you, which means that if you've got backers who want a refund or have questions or have issues with their card, etc., etc. Those emails can go to Backerkit rather than to you. Now, you, I think you can choose when they do the review. They'll ask you, do you want customer service inquiries to come to you directly or do you want Backerkit to deal with it? So I think you can choose. You can also set up your kind of refund policy and say, no refunds unless I approve them or yeah, refund anyone who wants a refund, etc., etc. So it's quite bespoke. You can kind of choose how you want to deal with each thing. And like I said, Backerkit will happily take that off your hands and deal with inquiries on your behalf, which is quite nice if you're busy. So another great thing is after you've sent your surveys off for review and they have been, you know, ex accepted or, you know, they've confirmed that you're good to go, you can send out a smoke test. Or I think actually you have to send out a smoke test. Oh God, again, why am I doing this video? I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, either you can do a smoke test or you have to. And that means that 5% of your backers will receive the surveys. And it means that you can do like a little test. So if you have done something wrong, um, you haven't sent out hundreds and hundreds of surveys. You've just got like 5% of people who might come back to you saying, uh, what's this? Or why am I being charged this? Or, you know, when you realize that you're undercharging people, you've only sent out 5%. Once that smoke test has been done, then you can send out the rest of your surveys to all of the rest of your backers and you can crack on basically. And the last really good thing is the fact that you can have a pre-order store. Have you ever run a Kickstarter and two minutes after it's ended, you get an email from someone saying, oh, I forgot, oh, I missed out, will these be in your store, etc., etc." It happens every single campaign for me. Or I have people that uh, their cards decline when they go to pay and then Kickstarter can cancels their pledge and then they contact me afterwards like, oh, is there any way of getting this now? Yes, of course, those items are going to be in my store eventually. However, it's nice to give people kind of, if you've got special Kickstarter prices, give them a little bit of leeway and let them have those special Kickstarter prices or... It's good to have extra funds up front in case anything goes wrong. <laughs> There's a million reasons why you might want to have pre-orders, basically. So you can set up your pre-order store in Backer Kit, which means anyone can come and pre-order those items. So that is a great thing. You can't do that with Kickstarter. Um, and the good thing is, is you've already set up all of those items with their SKUs for the, the surveys. So those items are already there. You don't really have to do much when you set up your pre-order store. It, it just kind of does it for you. Whereas if you wanted to do it on your website and set it up for pre-order there, everything would be very manual. You'd have to put everything in again. Now, the last main thing is probably to talk about the fees. Now, the fees are <laughs> dependent on how much you raise. So if you raise less than $50,000, the rate is going to be 2% for the campaign fee. And as it goes up, the more you raise, the lower the rate is. And then it's going to be a 3.5% transaction fee. That transaction fee doesn't apply for any funds you took through Kickstarter, because obviously Kickstarter have their own fees as well that they take. Um, this is for any funds raised through Backerkit. So that includes shipping, and add-ons and upgrades or pre-orders and things like that. Um, that's where they take the 3.5 transaction fee. So you don't have to worry about including that into your funding goal. The main part is your campaign fee. So as you can see here, if we raised 10,000 US dollars with 100 backers, the campaign fee is going to be $200. Um, I did get caught out on my f the first time I used it because I didn't realize it was going to be so high. Um, but now I know how much it is. You can use this little calculator to work out how much your fees are going to be before you do your Kickstarter, which means you can incorporate it, that into the funds and it means that you're not kind of losing out on any money. Now, whether you use it or not is up to you. <laughs> and as I have said before, there are plenty of other... Uh, 
things that you can do in backer kit that I, I don't know, I feel like I've only scratched the surface and I feel like I'm only ever gonna scratch the surface because I don't really intend to spend that much time going through every single function that it has. So personally for me, I feel like that kind of covers the basics of backer kit, why you might want to use it, what the pros are, what the cons are, um, and what the fees are likely to be. If you do want to use backer kit, I do have a referral code that I will leave below. Feel free to use that. Um, and again, I will leave a link to my Kickstarter video in case you're new to all of this and you wanna check that out too. Um, if anyone has any questions, like I said, please do leave a comment below and I will try my hardest to answer you. But as I said, I do not work for Kickstarter or Backer Kit and I'm not an expert in the field. This is just through my experience. But I really hope that this video has been helpful. And yeah, I will see you again soon for another video. So bye for now. Happy crowdfunding.